Oh. Happy Monday, everybody. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful Monday evening, and we're happy that you're joining us here on the home of all the hits. That's K102 Sandestin, Florida. No, actually, thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening. Oh, man, we had a week. We had a week. We had a weekend. We're here, and we're so happy that all of you are joining us. Uh, I'm getting my, my final shot tomorrow. And as uh, as uh, as Mr. Gwynn says that it's uh, then it's on me apparently because I ran my mouth and said I had to do a uh, a full on training montage to drop my the 19 pounds gained during uh, the the COVID lockdown. I've got to put together a training montage, guys. I'm a man uh, of my word. All right, got to yeah. do it. You get you got your second. I got my first one this afternoon. So there it is. Here we go. Team Pfizer. That's right. So so yeah, it'd be round two for me tomorrow. Uh, everybody, you know, I guess what is it? North of eighteen can get it now. Sixteen. 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 North, sixteen and north can get it now. So um, don't be hanging out next to me at the bends when we start having people back in the stadium without your shots. I don't want you near me if you don't. If you haven't had your shots, I don't want you. To, well, you're good. Like I, I don't and. It's a principal thing, sir. It's a principal thing. But that's kind of the point of getting the shots, right? I, I don't care. I want if you are unvaccinated, I want you like six feet away from me, out of principle. I just that want you to get vaccinated. That means you're not making the best decisions in the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you might throw uh-huh. things. You might spill things. You, you, you might, you might have some you, issues. You, sure. Yeah. yeah. You might be wearing Axe body spray. You might be, you know, you might be doing making some other questionable choices in your life that, uh, you know, I need to keep at a distance from me. So yeah. get your shots anyway. Uh. We have a big show for you this evening. We have uh, allegedly Jarrett Smith will be joining us this evening if the champion deems uh, deems it appropriate, and uh, he 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 may cut a promo. Who knows? This could happen. And uh, outside of that, I'm I, I'm. You guys covered it this morning. The ridiculous racist incident that happened uh, this past weekend. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to move on from it because I don't want to eat up a half hour of the show talking about idiots on the field. <clears throat> My suggestion, when it's proven, I think you get banned for a at minimum half the season, I think a full season, and you make it so they cannot receive any paychecks during that period. And you have to hit these idiots where the one place where they understand, and that's their wallet. It's the thing the agents understand. It's the thing the players understand. But we didn't do that in my culture. I don't care. You know how to receive a paycheck, and you know what it's like not to receive a paycheck, my friend. So go without a paycheck for a while, and then maybe you learn not to be an idiot, or at least be an idiot publicly. And I, because I, I can't, I can't change someone's heart. That's on them to change their own heart and to do the work necessary. But, uh, but I can't mess with the paycheck, and. Uh, you know, I've got to go with what uh, what what weapons I have. So if I'm uh, if I'm anyone out there, so if I'm any of these teams or uh, any of the the organizations that oversee said leagues, so UEFA, FIFA, said team, it's on you because I don't want to deal with this mess anymore. But here we are. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into uh, some more uh, some more positive things out there slightly more positive uh we want to talk about how uh how barcelona is just racing up (laughs) to the top of the league i mean i love this track so much john all your dances are the same except for the taibo Here's Ennio Morricone. It's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Here no, that's the- Ronald Koeman leading the charge of the Blaugrana. <laughs> Ronald Koeman is, is, shoot, shoot, don't talk. is yelling very loud things in a broken Dutch slash Spanish language. And it's working. Yeah. And Barcelona, okay. everybody clowned Ronald Koeman. Everybody. Clowned him. Nope. Everybody said we were right there with it. 
It's over. Atleti, it's over. They got it. It's over. Nope. Ten points at Christmas? Nope. I think it's ten points well, in January. Here's the thing. There's a lot of shows that would say, oh, no, we were right there. No, no. no. We planted the flag that Atleti was done. They, <laughs> it, it should, they should have. It should have been. It should have been, but nope, 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 nope. It is now one point deciding it. Atleti on 66, Barcelona on 65, Real Madrid on 63. They are not out of this either. Whoo. <laughs> this is going to be interesting going down to the wire. And oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Saturday, mm. Real Madrid hosting Barcelona. Yeah. <laughs> A little classical action Ooh. there. You know, no no big deal there. And then, oh, oh, oh also, by the way, uh, Sunday, Real Betis, fifth place, hosting Atletico Madrid. Oh. Oh. <sighs> so, at what point do we get the announcement that Ronald Koeman keeps the job? I mean, he's got a, another year on his contract. I don't think you have to have the announcement. I, I think it's just you... you for stability's talking. sake, I think you need to make an announcement. For stability's nah, sake. You, you, what you need to announce is that Lionel Messi's coming back next year. That's the thing that you're going to have to do first. And <laughs> that's going to wait until after the year's over because there there will have to be other dominoes that, that are attached to that one. But no, nah, I don't think you have to announce it. I mean, you signed the guy to a two-year deal. I think two, maybe three. It, it, it would look worse if you said, yeah. You know, we had these crazy people running for president of the club, and they were talking all this noise and talking about letting him go and not even giving him a chance. And that Victor Font character, he's over there talking about how Xavi's going to be the manager the first day he takes over and all this nonsense. Um, Yeah, just ignore that stuff. They weren't even, like, he wasn't the president, so nothing came from the club. I would leave it alone. I would just be giving Coleman the props. Uh, Will says Komen is Spanish FDB. That is extremely, uh, that's off. That's off. I'm going to have to disagree with that. Um, he is not as risk averse uh, as Frank is. Mm-hmm. And, and that's not a, you know, that's not a yes or a good or bad, a, a, an ugly, it's none of that. It's just no. Frank wanted security first. That was priority one. Ronald, not quite as much. I mean, he's not, like, wild and crazy, but it's not let's be safe. I don't get that sense from watching Barcelona these days. Right. And and, and here's the thing. when With Frank, what we've discussed before is that he's sort of a a child of, of Cruyff and a child uh, of the other guy uh, who's been listed many times. Louis Van Gaal. <laughs> And uh, and Van Hall is is more mechanical in in structure, and he's and everything structure. has a, you know fixed timing and fixed placement, and you know your role, and you do not deviate. And Cruyff was very much artistic and flowing, and you know, you know it's it's like uh, you know it's Jackson Pollock versus Cubism, and and you had two dynamic individuals who influenced one guy, and I and I think that. When things were going well, even fans at Ajax would say that Frank was probably a bit more rigid than they would have liked. But at the same time, he got results at Ajax, and he, as time went on, he loosened things up. But I think that he's a guy that, like you said, whenever he's new into a situation or he's trying to get his ideas implemented, he is very risk-averse and it's more mechanized. And I don't feel that from Komen at all. Like, I don't feel that sense of rigidity that exists with the Van Hall slash DeBoer ideas. Go ahead. Will, Will clarifies, Dutch manager no one gave a chance to approaching a title at the end of the first year more in the media slash fans' eyes than style. I can buy that part. Yeah, I can buy that. I, yeah. I can buy yeah. that comparison. Stylistically, yeah, no. I, I do have to disagree with Coco. FDB managed scared. No, no, it's not scared. It mm-hmm. wasn't scared at all. It was structured. Yeah. And positional play, which was what Frank DeBoer subscribed to, just like what Gabriel Heinze subscribes to, just like what Tata Martino subscribed to, just like what Pep Guardiola subscribes to, just like what Thomas Tuchel and Hansi Flick subscribed to. 
it's not it's it's not a playbook. It is a framework and it depends on your personal tastes how much meat you put on that. If you want it to be a framework and a way of playing but keep it loose, you're going to be more on the Cruyff side of things. If you want it to be very, very structured, you're going to be more on the Van Hall side of things. They are really the yin and the yang of this from a Dutch perspective. Right. You have the South American variant that, that can go in some different directions. Bielsa kind of goes in his own road with it. But Bielsa has said the most organized team he has ever watched is the team that Frank played on and won the European Cup, won the, won the Champions League in 95, beating Milan. He said that was the most organized team in the history of the sport. And he didn't say that in a negative sense. No. That worked for that team and that manager. Mm -hmm. What Frank did here worked pretty well until he lost his number nine and then he didn't have anybody to score goals and he didn't have a solution to that. That right. happens to a lot of people. Um, positional play is something that different people interpret. Ronald Koeman looks at it differently. I think he's probably closer to Van Hall than mm -hmm. Cruyff, but he is his own guy, you know, and, and he's going to subscribe right. to the way he thinks the game should be played, but then he's going to put his own special sauce to it. And that's what mm -hmm. we're seeing right now is working. I mean, for a guy who is bland, uh, Real Madrid's got 51 goals this season. Atleti's got 51 goals. Uh, next would be ooh, 44 for Real Sociedad. Barca's yep. got 68. I mean, they're finding the goals. That's not really a problem for this side. Mm -hmm. So, and, and again, I think it helps that there's is an, the the Dutch DNA is all over Barcelona. It is not the, the concepts are not completely foreign to to Barcelona. When they walk in and, and they start implementing ideas and strategies, there are people who came up from La Masia who understand what they're trying to get at. They, it's not like, well, why in God's name would we execute this or this? Oh, no, we know what we're doing with that. Okay, all right. So the growing pains are probably a little, you know, not quite as felt, I would say, as it would be in some other places. But it it, it is interesting to see as much as... Uh, Jason, I know you watch enough soccer probably for the entire group six times over. John's not far behind. And, you know, me and, and Jarrett are pulling up on the way back machine, but we were all wrong. And there are prognosticators at all the major networks, the four letter networks, the three letter networks that all said this was a terrible move. Oh, it's mm -hmm. bad. Oh, uh, it's going to be, he's going to be out. Messi's going to be gone. And now everyone has to reevaluate is I, I think Messi is probably going to stay now because Barcelona has proven that even in their damn near bankrupt state, that they are very competitive <laughs> and they if they somehow win La Liga, I think it's impossible for Messi to walk away because he knows he has a shot at continuing success here. And 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 a lot of that has to go to Ronald Koeman. And, and well done to him. I mean, you get proven wrong, get proven wrong. But it's last it's league loss for Barcelona was December fifth at Cadiz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and uh, for the record, Komen signed a two-year deal. He is under contract through the 30th of June, 2022. And Barca will get Atleti coming to Barcelona on May 9th. They don't have to go to Atleti. I think it's Barca's title to uh, lose at this point. Yeah. Now, I'm not seeing anything out of Atleti that tells me that they're going to get it. They're going to yeah. get the job done. Yeah. I mean... Um, a little bit of a back and forth with, with Coco about about Frank de Boer and, and that mm -hmm. aspect of positional play and that aspect of the Barcelona thing. Uh, Coco said FDB managed not to lose far more than he, he than to go out and win. The way I kind of hear that, Coco, is that he managed not to lose. 
And I never really got that sense from him. I think he wanted to have security defensively, which Tata did as well. Um, Gabriel Heinze will want to do that in a completely different way than the other two. So it's going to look very different because of that. He will want to be secure defensively, but he's going to want to do it way over there away from his goal, not defend deeper. Tata kind of went in between with that during his time and shifted and changed it over time. With the postseason in 2018, they defended a lot deeper. Frank Mm -hmm. went to that faster, and the team dropped earlier than tried to win the ball back high up the field. That's going to be the biggest difference. I don't take that as a play not to or, or play not to lose. I take that as a defensive security thing. And he just wanted yeah. to defend a little bit deeper and have more security right. than risk more up high up the field. Right. That's all. Um Again, it's just it's all down to different interpretations. But these people have far more in common than they have that is different. And that's the thing that has to be understood. They are not Big Sam, for example. Big Sam decides to come out of his cage when he smells gravy or yes. when there's a first half red card for the opposition. And he really even then didn't come out of his cage too much. No. A mm-hmm. little bit. A mm. little bit. Looked around. No, I- yeah, I will say the one the one thing that I feel about the about the divorce system is that it's here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this really well and we're not going to have a ton of flexibility in how we execute what we want to do. If the person presses really hard, we're not going to really shift things up too much. We're going to keep we're just going to do what we're going to do. And I think that rubs people the wrong way. Well, no 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 now that what you just said will be the exact same with Gabriel Heinze. If the opposition presses, they're going to play the exact same way. Right. I think what maybe what you meant, correct me if I'm wrong, is more about what you do without the ball, not so much what you do in response to the opposition, because Heinze will play out of the back every single time. Frank wanted to play out of the back. It's about Frank, when he didn't have the ball, if the press wasn't on perfectly, he wanted the team to drop. Right. Mm-hmm. Gabriel Heinze will want the team to accelerate forward and, and be mm-hmm. even more aggressive in the press. Yeah. That's where it separates. Right. And I think that that, and I'm glad that you said what you said about, about Gabriel Heinze, because people are going to expect a certain amount of flex, or they're going to want a certain amount of flexibility. Like, Oh, well, why didn't we change anything? Why didn't we do anything? It's like, well, why did we stop running the ball? It's, no, there's philosophically there. These guys have a, a belief and run the ball, Bobo. To... <laughs> run That's the right. damn ball. Yeah. yeah. All right, Bobo, you gonna mm-hmm. get rid of that ball anytime soon? No, yeah. I mean it's. But you're gonna, you know, when it comes to how they want to execute their philosophy, it's there's the way to do it, and if it's not the way, then you know they're not going to shift things up radically. So it's just something to keep in mind, but. I, I don't think a lot of the greats do. No. Gabriel Heinz say, I will not change. Right. Pep Guardiola said the same thing. Marcelo right. Bielsa said the same thing. Why don't you have a plan B? Because if I had a plan B, then I'd believe plan A didn't work. Right. I, exactly. I mean, and, and, and that's not changing the- tactics. That, that's, uh, the tactics and, and the style and the philosophy are like two completely different things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But, you know, people talk about the, about mechanization of, of, you know, of tactics and, and, and style and, and things of that sort. I, I want people to go back to when uh, Thierry Henry gave his interview about his days at Barcelona and he was playing on the left side and then he ventured to the right and got the ball and he scored. Right. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And Pep is like, and Pep is you're like, out. you're out. And the whole thing was, it didn't matter that you scored. You messed up structurally what we were trying to do. We were trying to create this space. You wrecked that by going and freelancing. You don't freelance in, uh, from where you are. Like I, You have to trust your teammates to go where they're supposed to go and do what they're supposed to do. It's not on you to implement or to, you know, to put yourself into that, into that situation. You got to trust your teammates. And that, to me, was the most eye-opening like story that I had, I had heard out of about uh, Pep Guardiola because of the fact that I'm a person that if Terry Henry goes and does that and he scores, 
I'm losing my mind, right? But then again, I'm not flipping Pep Guardiola yeah. either, right? Yeah. It, it, so with, with Pep is the boss, no one is above reproach. Exactly, and, and so it's it's something to think about. I I love these kinds of conversations where we can talk about about how the pieces on the board move and why certain players aren't able to go and freelance and why some players aren't able to go and do just whatever they want because the manager has this overarching plan that you don't, it's not your place to go and upend. It's very interesting. But again, it goes back to the fact that Ronald Koeman is just doing amazing things at Barcelona. I don't see how you, I think he has to write his contract out he's there for another year and i think that if you wanted to make sure that Lionel messi hangs around for a little bit longer you've proven your point that you can be competitive and is not now that they have some sense of stability up at the top i think it's even more likely that he can stay and i prove and prove me wrong man prove me wrong if i'm wrong i'm wrong so i'll, I'll say that but anywho um gentlemen what are you seeing out in the world it's, it's shocking you. Andrea Pirlo's not transmitting nothing. He ain't doing nothing, Nick. God. Yeah. <laughs> Jorge Ramos, his people, his banda. Andrea Pirlo ain't doing nothing. I, the, the team's in the top four. You have a midfield that's held together like MacGyver with, uh, with you know popsicle sticks and chewing gum. No, that's just the party they had. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Uh, you have players who have made idiotic decisions, and I'm going to throw Benucci into that one uh, because after after this past international break, the here are the players for the Azzurri who have tested positive of, for COVID: Benucci, Varati, Florenzi, uh, Grifo, Cranio, and Sorigu. Benucci, uh, that I've looked for these photos on Instagram and I cannot find them anymore. Obviously they were removed. A Benucci without a mask on, on the train, walking around. He's over the shoulder of Donnarumma. He's over the shoulder of all these other players. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> he's an absolute idiot. And I've talked about this man's decision-making in the past and it just he just goes on to prove it time and time again. Uh, Juve has real problems and it's not just... It's, it's not just on the field it's off the field you have players going off and you know you have you have players that are having parties and McKinney and Dybala and and then you have Ronaldo and his you know pending contract situation you think Ronaldo is going to stay at Juve if there's not Champions League no well, well, you know now the media is circling around that you have the the corpse of Chiellini walking around like staggering on the sideline you have Buffon saying he may still want to play there's so much turmoil around Juve, which is the most, and, and people are like, well, yeah, of course, it's like a it's top tier European soccer club. Of course, they're going to have this drama. No, Juve typically does not have this drama. Typically, they are they are steady Betty. They are the ones who just we just move forward and we're going to keep grinding, and we don't care what anyone else does. We're just going to do what we're going to do, and we all understand. That the zebra stripes mean more than anything, and we're just going to win, 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 win. And this year, it seemingly the wheels have fallen off. But baby, the the lug nuts were loose way before Andrea Pirlo came in. And, and, and Maurizio Sarri, these men can't be coached. They don't want to. They don't want to be coached. They don't want to be pushed. They don't want to be mentally and physically tested. There's something to it. And, and if if Juve falls into the trap that Chelsea ha- that falls into with regularity that Real Madrid fell into for a period of time where the inmates ran the asylum. There's two the, the, out of the three clubs, Juve, Chelsea, and Real Madrid. Two of them have a boatload of money. One of them does not. <laughs> so you can't really plug and play these superior players in to spot after spot and just keep coasting along and, and let the moron on in the suit on the touchline just trade out as they go along. Juve must install a, have a philosophy. They must have 
ideas, consistent ideas from the sideline that don't include everyone behind the ball, which is what you're going to get with Max Allegri. So, you know, I, I, you have a first time ever manager, hasn't managed a Primavera side, hasn't managed or or the youth side for, for, you know, for anyone else just walked right in from his, his courses, got in the suit and stepped on the touchline. And you're talking, and he's got you in the top four, and you're saying you're going to toss him? Yeah, Wednesday, you got Napoli coming to town. You might not be in the top four after Wednesday. Right, but it's the first time this man's managed. If you fire him after one year, that proves you're an idiot, not him. If, if, I, take a, if I take some intern and I throw him behind a, a computer and say, okay, you're balancing the books this month uh, for our Fortune 500 corporation. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, I know you just stepped in from College of Charleston there, buddy. Uh, but uh, the entire financial forecast that's uh, going to Wall Street at the end of the week is on you. I mean, no, you're an idiot. You're the one who put the person in the position to do that. Like, what, what did you think was going to happen? I left the uh, I left the gorilla cage open at the zoo. I don't know why, uh, you know, why Willie B got out and, like, ransacked the whole place. I don't, I don't know, know why happened. Rampage, the video game, turned into real life. Right. No, you're an idiot is what happened. And if Juve goes and says, Andrea Pirlo, get out of here. You're no good. You're stupid for hiring him in the first place. You should have kept Maurizio Sarri. You should have let the man build the plan, build out the program he wanted to build, and you remove anyone who doesn't want to play ball. There are people who will buy Juve players. And yeah, go ahead. There, there's one guy who doesn't want to play ball. Who? He he has a uh, he has very nice abs. Who Ronaldo doesn't want to play ball? Well, well he didn't want to play in in Saudi ball, and and he doesn't want to do the things Pirlo wants, and he's kind of limiting his manager's effectiveness. Yeah, well then he can go too. He might need to. Yep. He might need to. He needs to go. So let him go. And as far as I'm concerned, the uh, you know if he, if anyone who doesn't want to invest in the system can go kick rocks. Eh, that might be what they need yeah. to do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, since we're in the Serie A portion, we, we have a question on Twitter from a Brock of Gibraltar. And he, he starts off by going, good evening. Good evening, Brock. Jim Pallotta once pitched an exhibition match at the Coliseum. Question to you all. What would be your outlandish pitch for a pay-per-view match? Location, teams, etc. Uh, I would recreate the uh, Nike secret tournament of like 2v2 or th- i'd make it maybe 3v3 um i'd do it on like fight island i, I would go take fight island uh, away from dana white in the ufc and i would repurpose the uh, octagons into small little soccer pitches and i would do it pana style like you would play 2v2 you can pick your partner you come in it's a double elimination tournament we just get games non-stop until somebody wins you can win by scoring three goals, or you can win by nutmegging somebody on the other team. Let's do this. I'm in. I'm watching. I'll watch till it's over. I, I will say that I think you need to do, you need to follow through and do the Coliseum. And then you have, <laughs> and I, the, the, the posters alone are worth the price of admission. They're worth the pay per view. It's like for the first time in two thousand years. First time. <laughs> That's right. And then like you have the teams getting led in by like gladiators, like the, like old the whole school. Maximus procession and all that. That's right. And, and here's the thing: outside of the Coliseum at any given time, pre COVID, there were like forty seven dudes that look like they did CrossFit 24 seven that always wore these gladiator costumes. You can like, you pay a couple of euros and take a photo with you. Like just hire those guys. You know, you have to lay, the problem is, is that you have to cover the old basement system up because the, the, the Coliseum was not just flat earth that this stadium was built around. They had like a whole, this whole, uh, labyrinth of tunnels and elevators and everything else. And they would, they had a a floor that was covered in dirt and sand. 
and different parts of it would move around. If you watch the movie Gladiator, it's really not that far off. But I don't think you let any fans in, obviously. But I think if you, and this is if you really want to go like top shelf, Italian, all Italian, everything. You have so Sophia Loren come in, right? Just dressed to the nines. And she brings the ball out, surrounded by the gladiators. The players come out. It's Roma, Lazio. And then the Pope comes out, right? The Pope comes out and he blesses. The thing, and then you have one huge, massive thing in like one hit. One, the Pope comes out, he's issued like you know, in Padre Fide Spirito Santi. He does his whole thing, he blesses the arena, which because there's a bad history of Christians at the Coliseum, you know, yeah. you got to make sure you get that right. Yeah. So, you know, he does his thing, holy water, busts the players, and whatnot. And then Andrea Bocelli, even though he's a filthy and thirty stuff, no, 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 Massimo Ranieri, Massimo Ranieri comes out, Massimo Ranieri, he's he's. He's Napoli, man. He's, nah, he's I think the board is going to put you in a figure four, figure Andrea that. Bocelli hatred. You, you have to have Andrea Bocelli come out. You can't you can't have a, 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 Napoli, a, a Napolitano well, come should, out there and do that. They should. Negative, sir. Should. I, I would Look, I appreciate it. Yeah, they should. As a person from the southern part of the country, yeah, I appreciate they, they that. They should. Bring a little but, class up in here. Come on. But, I'm just saying that, <laughs> in my opinion, this is this is my pay per view, sir. And That's then true. they come out and they do the Italian national anthem, which they never do before the games. But I think you just have to do that because it's the Coliseum and whatnot. It would be gangbusters. It would be amazing, absolutely amazing. The 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 Roma derby inside the Coliseum because they've been people have been pitching that for so long. Jim Pilata is not off his rocker on that one. He went off, he went after everybody though. He's gone after everybody in his since he's left the team. Every interview he's taken, he's just nuked someone. But John, go ahead. Yours, your your pay-per-view. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh Alawalenze confirmed that several first team players do not have the required visa to travel to the US for the second leg quarterfinal versus Atlanta United. Uh, the statement from Ala Walense that was just posted a couple minutes ago, uh, the U.S. government has established very rigid rules for all consulates due to the pandemic, which includes the strict prohibition of visa applications. The problem applies to new visas. They hope to resolve the matter before leg two on April 13th. They just put out a statement uh, 13 minutes ago, uh, Felipe Cardenas, with the translation and bringing it to the English language attention. They got time to get this sorted out. It, it will yeah. get expedited because of all this. Um, the, uh, yeah, I mean, them putting this out there means they're freaking out a little bit and they're trying to yeah. put the pressure on, but they'll probably get it resolved. Yeah. But wow, that's a. Yes. That's what big. were you guys doing in preparing for the second leg? No. <sighs> Things being as they are, you take a little extra care, take a little extra time, get your paperwork filed, it, get everything sorted out, double, triple check what you need to mm-hmm. do, and then we have this coming up on the eve of the first leg. Good times. John, what's your pay-per-view uh, soccer thing? So, what, yeah, why, why is Nick explaining the Flavian Amphitheater to everybody, one of my favorite buildings in the history of the planet? You'll get to answer the question in a minute, sir. <laughs> so what I will do as a part of this is I will reintroduce the question in full so Jarek can think about it as I present my idea. Brock of Gibraltar. Thank you. Good evening, exclamation point. Jim Pilata once pitched an exhibition match at the Coliseum. A question to you all, what would be your outlandish pitch for a pay-per-view match, location, particular teams, etc.? So that is the question that has been posed by Brock of Gibraltar. And Nick, I'm kind of with you, but what mm-hmm. I was going to do was hold it in, in St. Peter's there in the courtyard. So, the, so, you know, you, you just have the, the pitch there. You might have to roll out something artificial or you just let it be right there on the cobblestones. And it's just, you know, on the natural surface there. And then you have the Pope. The Pope doesn't have to do any legwork. All the Pope has no. to do is come out. He sits there and he blesses it right there from the right there yeah. from his window. You going to play yeah, on cobblestones? Yeah. Like the kids, Are you man. insane? Like the kids. No, they don't even play on cobblestones. They're, they're not that crazy. They'll go no, find the something. Play on the cobblestones. They'll go find something that's a little more flat. Come <laughs> on now. 
But yeah, hey, look, it's your if, vision, John. Roll with but it. If, but like I yeah, said, if roll it's, ankles. If it's, that's what's going to happen. If it's the if it's the Pope's house and it's the Pope's front yard, that's right. You're gonna play by the Pope's rules, and you're gonna play with, with him looking at you from uh, from the crow's nest. So uh, that would be my venue, and just play it like the, you know, like the kids that we always see. So play it in the Pope's front yard. You do that. Maybe you have, uh, you know, maybe you have an audience. Maybe you put up some temporary stands or something. I don't know. Uh, like the like in the high school bleachers, so that mm-hmm. way it doesn't do any real damage to anything, or maybe you just have you yeah. know people like it like it's a, a Sunday morning blessing where everybody just kind of crowds around the pitch, and you, maybe you see something, maybe you don't. Can you imagine if it, if one of the teams is San Lorenzo, and you actually get to see the Pope go full fanboy, see like the, like that, like scarf, like you know, like he like you see the the Pope, he like puts the scarf down, and all that, <laughs> like he's got like flares going. <laughs> It'd be I, like I the Real Sociedad manager of, uh, from yesterday. See, get the Pope wearing the San Lorenzo jersey. Yeah. Underneath all the, the papal robes and That's everything. Right. He just he only it. blesses the San Lorenzo team. <laughs> he's, it's, he's like, he's, he comes he out. No, you get nothing. You get nothing. He comes out in full regalia. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he just pulls the robe back, and you see the San Lorenzo jersey right there. No, That's it, right. It, it'd be like uh, our guy yesterday, the Real Sociedad manager. Yeah. 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 Oh, that was he, 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 they, they give him the jersey, he puts it on. He, they give epic. him a scarf. And he went nuts. Esto va por toda Guipúzcoa. Esto va por todos los que sienten la Real. After Stand he up. wins the trophy. Guipúzcoa, todos conmigo, eh. In the press conference. Real, Ale! Y la más yarte! That was a mark out. So, uh, yes, vamos real. So, San Lorenzo and uh, and the Pope gets to pick the opponent just to have it in his front yard because since it's his yard, it's his rules, it's his game show. Jarrett. Who would you have? Where would it be? And what is your matchup? Who, buddy? Um. Hmm. Oh, and by the way, I Andy, don't know Andy, who Andy, would. You thought that you just uh, dropped in from the rafters, much like Sting, basically. That's yeah, that's what happens. Um, I don't know who I would have playing it. That would have to be the second leg of me figuring this out. Somehow put a field inside of the Forbidden City because it's the most striking and overwhelming facility I've ever been in my life. Find a way to play a game either in there or in Tiananmen Square. Um, both of those are just kind of overwhelming places. Like, find a way to play there. I guess I'd have to be the uh, China's national team if you did that. But it's just the Chinese Super League's having problems. Yeah, we're gonna raise some money. We're gonna play in. Uh, we're gonna play in the Forbidden City in one of the courtyards, which probably is big enough, like at least Bobby Dodd style. Like damn place is pretty big. Um, uh, that would be one. Um, I don't know who you would play there, and I don't know. Yeah, can you imagine Ronaldo taking out like one of the Terracotta Warriors by accident with a free oh. kick? Oh, man. Uh, Siena is the kind of place you could do it to, man. Siena is flat enough. And the, there, there's enough space between the pits in Siena where you could pull that off. <laughs> and then you just you just see, like, the Chinese military come out right there in the middle of the match, and they just sit there and put Ronaldo in handcuffs and take him off. That's it. He's yeah, gone. it's because he's not a basketball player. Exactly. If, if Dwayne Wade, not if NBA, Wade, buddy. You're in the wrong if place. If Dwayne Wade bounced a basketball off of the kneeling archer and destroyed it, they'd be like, ah, it happens. <laughs> Didn't they build a, a statue to Stefan Marbury in China? I'm not even surprised if that happened. Like, I think it was yeah outside the arena where he played. Yeah, I think yeah. so. Would not flinch if you told me that was accurate. <laughs> Just um, that out there. One of my favorite countries i've ever been to and some some of my favorite people i've ever been around like the citizens were just the most awesome human beings to talk to and to hang out with um let's see um yeah what, i, I would you want to put like, one in, you want to put one in front of the taj mahal i said i've never been there and i'm like trying to reference this off things i've done so i can like visualize it 
like in my head and have something to base it off of. I'd be interested if you want to do something with the Indian Super League and Taj Mahal. Let's talk. <laughs> See, if if you really wanted to go and make like a statement game, you could find one of the places where they did uh, like where they had like no man's land, like in World War One, and have like two European countries play a game like right there where no man's land was and have your statement of we found a better way to solve our problems. That right there. You're going to play a game of Passchendaele? I'm just saying. And Passchendaele is a bog, first one. Uh, Verdun is literally still like a, a, a field of hills. You can figure it out. You can figure it out. I'm just saying it can happen. I'm just saying it can happen. There's, there's things still we can do. I, I like that's a Verdun. great question. Who put forward that question? This would be Brock of Gibraltar on Brock Twitter. Brock of Gibraltar. Well, well done. That's a great question. They're still digging ordnance out of Verdun, I think. And where was the other one I saw? Um, there was a club recently where they talked. Oh, it was one of the Scottish clubs. They had to, like, suspend a game because they found, like, World War II, basically a German bomb. It might have been near, uh, might have been near, uh, I think it was at uh, Inverness Caledonian Thistle Stadium. They found German ordinances from the, uh, from the Blitz, and they had to, like, suspend a game to dig it up and detonate it. Hmm. So that, those are the, uh, the, early, uh, the early thoughts on the play a game anywhere with anybody that was put to us on Twitter. And I have retweeted it, and I'll put it in the Discord, as a matter of fact. There we go. I like that. What, what what else is happening in the Twitch page? What are the uh, Coco thinks North Korea's got to have a Dennis Rodman statue, right? Ha- I have to. Well, that was before. He's made some comments about the dear leader since that have been a bit problematic. So well, that, it may it have down. been melted down for you know they had ammo it. or something. They had it and they took it down. Uh, Burned thinks that the U.S. State Department is trying its own version of conca calfing. <laughs> Hey, you know, look, hey, things happen. There's international, international stuff. Like, things can happen, you know. Coco's pay-per-view is Landon Donovan, Clint Dempsey, Josie Altador, David Beckham, and Joseph Martinez, obviously all in their prime. So, so we have uh, crazy alternate universes going on as well. In an old school MLS style penalty or old style shootout, not penalty shootout, just the old style shootout from thirty Ooh. yards, thirty five yards, thirty five yards, five seconds. Who's the goalkeeper in this though? Jorge Campos. Just because. Nick Romandi. I think it would have to be Campos. Nick Romando. What? Romando. Romando didn't face any of the. Well, no, he did. Maybe at the very, very beginning of his career. No, compost did. Um, I mean, if we're going to make sure like we're going back in time and space and bending like eras, uh, we can put Shep Messing in there because he faced him back in the day in the NASL. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can get really crazy with it. God, I'm trying to think of that's still the best penalty format. Uh, Yeah, best shootout format. It's not a penalty. I, I think that gets confused sometimes. Like the penalties were penalties, but this was the shootout to decide the match. Yes, the shootout, excuse me. Yeah, because for a that shootout, preferred... I'd much rather have that than the penalty yeah. shootout, 100%. Yeah. Put Tim Melia in there. Even if he's never seen it, I just want to see what happens. Could be interesting. Yeah. Could be That's interesting. Uh, and Coco wants to add Wondolowski into it as well, which changes the betting line entirely. I would... My only question with that that. is Beckham in his prime. I don't think Beckham would be good at it either. Well, I don't know. He could hit a ball pretty well on the move too. Right. But the thing, like that's my, that's my whole thing is that it it remind me, I'm trying to remember the rules. So you had like, you could only go so far. No, 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 no. You just, it's five seconds. You had to get the shot off. And I think the ball had actually had to cross the line within five seconds. Yes, that oh, is. Yeah, yes. Beckham could do that. Yeah, yeah. Beckham could do that. Because you had to, you'd have different strategies. Like back in the old NASL, Carlos Alberto would flip the ball up and he'd hit it off the volley. Jeff Agus did that. Um, some mm-hmm. would try to dribble the keeper. Some would would dribble to about the top of the eighteen and and try to get the keeper leaning one way or another. So you had yeah, a bunch always, of different ways of doing it. 
I always this thought that like Joseph would get very interesting since he Joseph can chew up so much turf in thirty five. Yeah, in thirty, he could th- chew up thirty five yards real damn quick. Joseph mm-hmm. would be the wild card. I think Donovan would be really, really good at it and really smooth. Dempsey would try stuff in a different way than Joseph. Uh, I think Beckham would take a touch or two and let it rip. Um, I don't know what Wando would do in it. One of the craziest things Donovan um, would have his his legs, his body, and his head all telling you different directions that he's going to go. No, nah, Donovan. Yeah, I think Donovan. You'd you'd know which way he's going to go. You just couldn't catch him. I think mean, he'd be so quick in it. Um, I think he would deceive you. But that's fair. Speaking of that. speaking of Beckham and and hitting the ball like on the roll, one of the craziest experiences I had uh, was after a Silverbacks game pretty soon after Eric Winalda had, had come in to be the technical director and he was in Atlanta a good bit, summer 12 uh, Beckham's last year with the galaxy. And they were playing Portland in like a Saturday night NBC game. And it was on at the, uh, the post game. I can't remember who the sponsor was, wherever, wherever they did post game things. Um, it was a sponsored element. So of course we all had to go. And, uh, he scored twice in that game, and the first goal, like Portland just backs off. Portland wasn't very good. This was their second year in the league. They backed off, and Beckham takes like one touch with the sole of his foot and just rolls it forward. And before he even hits it, when all does like goal, like he hasn't even <laughs> taken the shot yet, and when all does like goal. And it's the one where you see in all the highlights where Beckham hits it, goes flying into the net, and he just shrugs at Robbie Keane. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah. When before it's even hit, when all does like goal, it's ridiculous. That Isn't it wild how how pros can just see things like those little moments, and they see everything lined up, and they're like, "Yep." It, it's almost like when, and I, I think the first that the mass audience got to see it was when when. I think Tony Romo has done it better than just about yeah. anyone else. When he would sit there and look at a formation like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going slot here. Look at the safety. Safety's cheated back. He's, you know, he's on his heels. And everyone else is like, wait, what? What? And sure mm-hmm. enough, like, boop, 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 boop. There it is. Yeah. It was the whole time he was right. They just see things, these little subtle differences. Anytime anyone says, oh, I could do that. Uh, uh, yeah. Just, yeah, you find those clips of those guys seeing like that that two tenths of an inch that that opening and I'm like, got it. That it's, it's just next, that next level of vision. It's, it's absurd to watch. Yeah. It's reading cool thing, the man. game like that, when you're around somebody who can read it that way, it's pretty sweet. It's, yeah. it's a lot of fun to watch a game with somebody like that. Good Lord. Good Lord. Uh, all right. So what else is happening? Do we have anything on the Twitters? Uh, we got a little bit more of uh, this. Sergio Ramos on his Real Madrid future. I've earned the right to make whatever decision I want. And he's got a new Amazon Prime documentary that will premiere on Friday in Spain. La Leyenda de Sergio Ramos. <laughs> he's not wrong. Of Sergio. He, he's absolutely right. Yeah, he's not wrong. It's six episodes. Uh, is, is this a... They already did one of these. I can't remember what the, the last one was called. Um, so this is another six episode series. I actually liked the last one. I, I was entertained by it. It was very smoothly done. Yeah. Like, I mean, it was very, uh, there was a lot of work that was put into it to make it look really good and, and, and to cover exactly what they wanted to cover, but it was good. I mean, it, it, you know, I, I liked it. I, I like Sergio Ramos more after that. Um, there, there's, people who are probably screaming because we're talking about Sergio Ramos and not hating on him. Uh, but it's quite entertaining. They can, they, they, they can get over themselves. Yeah. They don't want to recognize greatness. That's between them and God. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm very intrigued to see what he does. He said, I've earned the right to make whatever decision I want. I'm still at my best. And in the years to come, I will continue to perform at the highest level. If not, I'll stay at home as it wouldn't be worth it. 
The fact that I'm still at my best with my age is no accident. We've been sowing the seeds for years. I mean, man's won a World Cup. He's won numerous Champions League titles. I'm not even putting Copa del Rey. Okay, when you win, when you win the World Cup and the Champions League, okay, great. Yeah, I won a few Copa del Rey as well. Okay, a few league titles. Man can do whatever he wants. You don't have to like him. He's obnoxious. He's very good. He's a dirty player, but he has figured out how to be where he needs to be, no matter what the situation oh, is. Oh, guess what else he wants to do? Which I did Let's not. Go. I have not heard this what? one. Um, he's a career. Uh, no, I think he's already done a little bit of that, actually. Uh, he wants to be with Spain this summer at the Olympics. <laughs> he wants yeah. a gold Does he medal. Not, the, the, I, the, okay. What? Because you get, you get a certain number of over 25 players, yeah, right? You know, right? Over yeah, 20, over 24 in this case. It used to be 23, 23. but it got pushed back a year. So blah, blah. Uh, yeah, you get three of them. So absolutely, yeah. I bring him in. Yeah, he said. I'm thinking about the fifth Champions League, the World Cup, the Olympics. I will leave when the time comes. Ooh. Hey, that, that's that's yeah. uh, that's some Ric Flair ish right there. Yeah, that is that is. And to Nick's point, um, and to Jason's point about you know like and then what he's talked about you know sowing the seeds. I don't know if we've talked about this, but I mean we are in like we're getting to the point where the first real generation that was getting like long-term scientific care of the human body for a decade plus are really starting to hit their late career stride. Like when these guys were younger, you were getting really on the, on the knife's edge of not just, you know, we're going to take care of ourselves right now. We're going to take care of ourselves so that in 15 years we can play the game at this level and try and compete. We're seeing those guys hit their ages now. And yeah, we are think probably going to see more of this of guys who are in their uh in their twilight years that aren't really nearly as twilight as they might have been in the past because the advances in medicine and science of not just getting you ready and keeping you healthy now but preserving your body for 15 years down the road you think this is wild now wait till some of these dudes who are like 23 and 24 wait till they're 37 now, Will yep. is uh, in fantasy land saying that he should go to Atleti just so he can team up with uh, Simeone. Not happening. Nope, 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 nope. But there was one on the Twitch pitch that, uh, Nick, your comment is necessary on Coco's suggestion of Ramos to Juve. It'd be on a free. If they get rid of Pirlo and they throw this whole youth into the toilet, that could make some sense. I would hope that they would get rid of Benucci and slot him next to the delete. If they did that, then that that would make sense. I'm cool with that If as long as they get rid of Benucci. It's time to put the Benucci era to rest on the national team, on uh, for the club side as well. I, I you know, whatever, if, if he wants to keep playing for Juve and keep making a clown of himself, that's fine. Just don't don't be the typhoid Mary of your national team. That's all I'm asking. You can be an absolute idiot if you want, but be an absolute idiot on your own time. The minute you cross the streams and become an idiot on like the national level, I have no. No. <laughs> I'm just going to retweet the Thanos meme again that I sent to Nick this weekend. Yes. For you, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's hey, not look, looking good. Juve, if Juve goes and they bring back Max Allegri and they decide they're going to go back to the old ways, they're still going to lose. There's just not enough talent across the board on that team. They've been stocking it with free transfers and loan deals and aging superstars for too freaking long. And I, I it, what's hilarious is that even at his age, Sergio Ramos would be an upgrade. <laughs> yes. Over half of the guys that they have at their disposal on the defensive side of the ball anyway. So yeah. you know, whatever. And just remember that he is not a part of the uh, tie with Liverpool this, this go around. He's been ruled out of uh, – both legs because of the calf injury. Mosala mm-hmm. won't be afraid. No. 
And uh, you're going to be too busy thinking about a Spanish beach. Yeah. He's thinking about wanting to be his teammate. Yeah. And Jurgen Klopp will invite, would invite uh, Sergio Ramos to dinner these days. Mm. Stab him, maybe. Yeah. Klopp said that uh, Liverpool are not on a revenge tour ahead of the yeah. showdown with Real Madrid. Right. Um, said they're they're not going to be focusing on that win in the final with Madrid three uh, one. We're not on a revenge tour here, Klopp said. Life is like this. I don't believe too much in revenge, but it would be nice to get through. We feel in a good moment in the Premier League. Now we hope to keep that momentum. That would be very helpful. We'll get into that. We got some predictions to make. We'll we'll, we'll do that here in a bit. We got a, um, we got a promo. We got a promo to hear too, don't we? Yeah, we do have a promo to hear. Good. Grief. It would also it would t- tell Klopp it would also be uh, helpful if he has a keeper who does not. Have one of the all time well, 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 there's also a very good chance he was concussed. Yes. So, oh, yeah. 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 I'm going to, I'm going to leave him alone. Klopp Klopp should have subbed him out. Mm -hmm. Yes. They should have realized that maybe our goalkeeper is concussed Mm -hmm. because he took a knee to the head. He is Billy Bob from Varsity Blues, and we're just going to keep trucking him out there until he gets uh, until he gets Lance hurt and cost him his ride to Florida State, and then make yep. him the scapegoat. Yep. Mm. My God, Klopp is Bud Kilmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, R.I.P. to your mentions. That's not bad. That's so not then, bad. So then, who is James Vanderbeek? At Liverpool. I don't want your life. I don't want your life. That's, That's a great movie. Movies. It's a great, great it's, it's movie. It's such a good movie. Such a R. good R. movie. Billy Bob. Such a good yeah. movie. Um I don't I don't know I don't know who the Johnny Moxon is for, for Liverpool. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know who it would be. I don't know, but that I, I will yeah, say I that with a good one. You you have to have someone on your roster ready for revenge. You can say, "Well, we're not out for right. revenge," but you got you have to have somebody with the razor blade under the fingernail ready to go. I'm just yeah, saying, oh, yeah, I mean, you, you're gonna have to got, have an. You've edge. got an attacker somewhere who's got a razor blade inside their lip, ready to go. Well, I don't know if Liverpool's got that, to be honest. But I mean, you're gonna have to use that as some mo- some motivation here. It's gonna have yeah. to be part of your pregame conversation. Yeah. Um, Champions League back tomorrow in Europe with two games. It's Real Madrid and Liverpool, Manchester City and Dortmund. Wednesday, we get the other two games in the quarterfinal. Bayern Munich hosting PSG and Porto hosting Chelsea. We've got the CONCACAF Champions League as well. We've talked about that extensively. We will continue to tomorrow. We know Atlanta United is in action tomorrow evening in Costa Rica and Alawalense. We've also mm-hmm. got Marathon hosting the Portland Timbers tomorrow. Arcae of Haiti hosting Cruz Azul, which I believe might have sent their U12 team to play this yeah. match. <laughs> Yes. What you gotta Possibly. do, man? Allegedly, maybe, yeah. maybe the U20s instead of the U12s, but they probably thought about it. You gotta do that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, sometimes you do. A um, uh, question to, you the, to get the your floor. U20s killed out of this, like when when the Haitian team's like they don't respect us. Fine, we'll send them back body bags. Uh, mm-hmm. They're not playing in Haiti, um, so they don't have their the backup. Dominican that, Republic, that, right? tried, yes, they're playing in the Dominican Republic in Santo Domingo. Um, yeah, they're they're they don't have their backup that tried to scare the Belize national team. They don't have that. Uh, question of the floor uh, with Man United firmly in second place in mm-hmm. uh, the Premier League. Is it now time to fire Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Of course, it, it, yes, it, yeah, absolutely. yeah, absolutely. It's, 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 it's always a good time, right? It's always a good time. Four, four losses in thirty. Time. You know, I mean, it's time. Yeah, partly cloudy. Fire yeah, 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 yeah. Ole, Ole yes, out. It's I time mean. to fire him and for him to go to Celtic. Jared. Jared. No, eh, eh, la, 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 eh. That would be Ole trying not to insult Celtic. Because <laughs> he's a very nice guy. Ole seems like a gentleman. He is a gentleman. He's absolutely a gentleman. He's, he's like a gentleman because he hasn't axe murdered someone yet. 
after all of this drama that we know of. Now, don't start yeah, slandering man. Oli. He is a nice man who's smiling almost all the time, and everybody hates and him for games. some reason. Yeah. Well, he's drawing a good number, too. I mean, let's, let's, let's also be real. He's not that. losing them, though. No, he's only lost four. Sitting in second place in behind, a, uh, behind a, an absolute machine of a team. Kind of like that Komen guy over in uh, at Barcelona. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a little different. There, there's, there's far more questions about Ole than there are about Komen right now. Because Ole does have nine draws out of 30. Ole is not having the goal differential that Ronald Komen is. He also doesn't have Lionel Messi. That helps. Um, but... He, yeah, there's more questions. There's there's questions about both with what they've done in Champions League. That's, yes, uh, Ole didn't get as far as Komen did this year in Champions League. Now Ole maybe needs to win the Europa League. I mean, th- there's going to be people, if he doesn't win it, that will start the Ole out thing again. It's for me. It's not time yet. We've we've covered this a million times. I I don't think it's time to do it. I think next year is the pressure to win trophies, and if they don't, then it's probably right. time to make the change. But yeah. correct, you, you need to give him a little bit more. He he's done everything that needed to be done to fix it. It's fixed. They are a team that is back where they were before. It's mm-hmm. fixed. He did that. Can he be the one to win trophies now that it's fixed? That's the part we don't know yet. And he's going to have to do that to keep the job. Yep. Right. Sometimes the job changes, and he's got to change with it. Uh, second question to the floor. Christian Pulisic, is it time to start questioning the longevity of his career? <sighs> no. Longevity yeah. of his career, it's way too early. Um is it time to be really worried about the uh, balsa wood his legs appear to be made out of? Yes. Yes. Balsa wood and uh, rubber bands that yeah. appear to be the ligaments. Really stretched out rubber uh, bands. Yeah. I think Tracy yeah. McGrady has questions about Christian Pulisic's injury <laughs> issues. Man. Cold-blooded. That's it. Yeah. Oh, it's cold-blooded. Accurate. <laughs> Accurate, but cold-blooded. Coco says Pulisic starting to feel a little Greg Oden-ish. Yes. But Greg Oden was 38 when he went into the NBA. Right. Greg, on draft night, Greg Oden walked out, and it looked like somebody's grandpa got drafted. Uh Uh-huh. The way he walked was all like, you know, like you could tell his knees were rickety. Rickety. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I don't go know watch, watch the highlights of that game. Ohio State national championship game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a monster. It's he true. was, but my <laughs> God, that man looked like he was 47 years old. I agree with you. I just I feel 19. like we do forget how absolutely horrifying he was to watch at the expense of other other college players who were not. They didn't do anything wrong to be put in that position to get eaten alive by a kaiju. That's accurate. Uh, Burned is very mean this evening. Uh, oh. he, he talking about Ole. He said he is a gentleman who is so nice that he doesn't even tell his team what to do tactically. He just lets them play and tells them to give the ball to Bruno Fernandes. That's that's that's, that's hard. <laughs> that's really really hard. Launch, launch all of the missiles from Austria with love. Good lord. Heat. So mean. Mm. <laughs> so, so mean. All right. I want to make sure we get our picks in because we do have a hard out at nine o'clock. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Before we do that. Yeah, we were going to talk about what happened last week. Yes. We were going to talk about the scores. We, John's we, re- we have re- to, like wrangling papers. We have papers to discuss around. what happened this past week. And as, as the former champion, I get to intro this because okay. it is important that this man gets his due time. Oh my can't goodness! Have it's rushing. like he beat everybody by like ten. He got no, one more speed. right. No, 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 no. no. Two no, of no, us, senor. two of us had an epic no, week. No, no, no. Two of us no, had an epic stosito, week. Stosito, stosito, stosito. Four and zero. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I like no. that Nick is fighting for this more than I. Am. <laughs> yeah, seriously. What is going on here? It, it, it must be done because 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 if it was up to Jason, we would be racing into this week's picks. But instead, <laughs> no, 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 no. That is not what I was gonna do. Uh, 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 uh. No. 
But no. what we have to do is we have to acknowledge this week that we have a new winner, a man who climbed to the top of the table, and he grabbed that brass ring. He grabbed, that, he grabbed that money in the bank suitcase at the top of the ladder. John, Grand. the ladder fell on top of you. How many did you get right? You can't hey. chime in. Nick can chime in. He's one. <laughs> Hey, what I'm going to say now is that is that the giant himself has chimed in. He's chucked the people necessary over the ropes. He's the champion this week. Jarrett underscore Smith, tell him what time it is. You see, I came from humble origins. I came from a life of failure, of disappointment. Mm. Go look at my high school. No, seriously, it was all bad. Uh, mm. we, we, we won like 10 baseball games in four years. Mm. I came from never seeing the light mm-hmm. at the top of the rainforest. Oh, never saw it. But I kept digging. <sighs> kept digging. I kept moving the dirt. Move the dirt. Move kept the climbing. Climbing. And when it came down to it, what happened? I, I watched the greats and I mimicked oh, them. The but then, mm. when I got locked in with him, that's right. When I got locked in with him, mm. then took a little one-two, and I showed him what's what. Because what's what? when it came down to it, and I got in the ring on that special night, I came at the king, but I did not miss. He didn't miss. So I invite any of you Ooh. to know. That you too can come at the king and not miss if you're not afraid. Hold on, what Take was your strategy, head. Jared? If what? you're absolutely willing, what was your strategy, you Jason? For four out of six bets, yeah, that's right. And then break off the two of them. Uh huh. That's right. That's right. And, and how close? Right. How close was this? By the way, you got the Munich game because RB Leipzig uh, couldn't hit water if they fell off of a boat. That's a problem. Um, you got that one. And then I thought I was going to hit the draw yesterday that all of you were against. I thought I was going to hit the draw in Sevilla and Atleti until a 70th minute goal. It was one, it was two goals that decided this. And what I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted by a former champion and some other guy. (laughs) <laughs> this was the best week, I-, I would say, ever, but some other guy doesn't keep accurate records, so <laughs> I think this was the best week ever. I know it was the first time that there were two people 4-0 and o going into the weekend. I that know that for a fact. That is so 4-0 and o going into Red Bull Leipzig, Le- or RB Leipzig, sorry. They should have been Red Bull Leipzig. They would have won the stupid game if they had drank some Red Bull. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> that one, and then the draw with Sevilla and Atleti that didn't quite happen. I was very close, but Jarrett won it with five out of six. That is the best ever, we think. We don't have accurate record keeping. It's like the beginnings of the U.S. Soccer Federation. We don't know. We're just guessing. Uh, but he ended up how much to the good? Plus 1046. Ooh. That's a good week if you were following Jarrett Smith. And how, I'll never repeat it again. How much did I end up to the good? Plus 819. Yeah, I'll take that. Really not too broken up about it. It's pretty good. He got me by one. If it if that draw had come through, it would have flipped. It would have been fine. That's a really good week. And Jarrett followed four of my picks, like he said. Nick came in in the positive as well. We had three in the positive this time around. Plus 177. Nick got there, I think, because of the Manchester City win over Barcelona. That is correct. In UEFA Women's Champions League, which was still one of the dumbest sets of odds I've ever heard on this show. And uh, John, where'd you some, And then some guy. Some other guy. Some yeah, other right. guy was one in five with a minus 373. Oh, Jarrett was lot. like the guy on the last lap at Talladega, and he's in second. Mm. And so he waits for that last lap pass in like lane in like turn three. Last lap pass. What, 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 what are you even drinking, Johnny? Lapped you like five laps to go. 
No, dude, I'm talking about Jarrett and you is what I'm talking Ooh. about. He didn't lap me. That's, I was plus no, 800. What he, no, what I'm saying is in my NASCAR analogy, in a restrictor plate race, he was right behind you in Talladega. You were number one, and he was number two going into the last lap. And then in that turn three and turn four where you got that long shoot, he slingshots past you and gets the win. That's what it was. Okay. Slingshots past you at the end. That's what happened. Why don't you uh, work on not so much the analogies, but making better picks? Because people are saying you should get relegated. <laughs> I don't know to what. Look, maybe uh, I, lacrosse I picks. Maybe. I, I will say this is a pause. If you followed three of us this week, you made money. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, it burned. That's, that's a, Burn says that's you amazing. You show with those kind of odds. Three out of four in the money. Burn says it's mm-hmm. amazing. It was a great week. Yeah. Except for the other guy. Some other guy. Yes. So, Jarrett, you get, and and we're going to do one pick a day, even though we've got Champions League, right? Everybody good with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So, one pick a day. Jarrett gets two picks, and he can veto anybody else's pick. Uh, everybody else gets one pick, and there's one consensus pick. That's how it plays out. Or good? do we let the Twitch pitch make that pick? Uh, again, that would probably take forever to do, and we've got uh, 47 minutes until the run-up. Okay. So, let's get into it on Tuesday. Now, there is an Atlanta United game on Tuesday that, that could be up for grabs. It went to Valencia. You've also got Marathon in Portland. You've got Arke and Cruz Azul. Don't pick that one, anybody. Please don't pick that one. You've got San Lorenzo and Santos in Copa Libertadores qualification round. That's an interesting matchup. You've also got Manchester City and Dortmund and Real Madrid and Liverpool. I don't think we need to go into Coupe de France and Monaco and Metz. Anybody want to claim anything that has been mentioned thus far? Burned is yelling for Jarrett to take a Scottish game. We've got to get a little bit later in the week for that one. He might have to be strategic yeah, about his uh, choices. It'll, it'll, it'll happen, though. Yeah, I figured. That's all right. I got the Scottish one with Jared last time. I was happy about that. That's true. Jake Mulraney, Inverness. <laughs> um, Do we need to go with the consensus pick out of the gate on Real Madrid and Liverpool? Because it is pretty much a toss-up. Yep. Yep. All right, that's the consensus pick. Real Madrid, Liverpool tomorrow. What are the numbers you have, John? Real Madrid plus 172. Your draw is a plus 250. Liverpool's a plus 161. That's a little more shifted than I thought it would be. Um, It's pretty much even. Um... Well, I probably probably have to go first, don't I? Uh, Sure. Since Since I was the other guy. Sure. Uh, I'll go draw. Draw? Yep. Okay. Uh, Nick, you were next. All right. Well, uh, what's uh, question to the floor? When was the last line move on that on that particular game? Uh, good question. Now, is there a line shift? The one that I have in front of me from Sofa Score was plus one sixty three Madrid, plus one sixty Liverpool. So yeah, like and remember that mine on. is a composite yeah. of about a dozen different uh, books. Okay. Yeah. I will take Real Madrid. At home. At home. To win. I'm not going against uh, Zinedine Zidane in Champions League. I just think he's uh, he knows what he's doing. All right, I'm next, and I will go against Zinedine Zidane. I'm going Liverpool. Yeah, I did it. Liverpool. Jared. It's okay. I'll take the draw. Draw. All right. Wednesday. No more consensus picks. We've mm-hmm. got Independiente del Valle hosting Grêmio. We've got Saprissa and Philly, Leon and Toronto, Olympia and Club America. We've got Bayern and Munich and PSG. We've got Porto and Chelsea. We've got Juventus and Napoli. We've got Inter and Sassuolo, Real Sociedad and Athletic Bilbao. I think that's as far as... Oh, oh no, the uh, Comma Ball Recopa. Defensa y Justicia and Palmeiras. Hmm. 
I, I personally like the uh, the PSG. Is that your pick? Yeah, that's my uh, that's my. Jared, are you gonna block it? No, carry on. All right, Bayern and PSG is the pick from Nick. What are the odds, John? Bayern a minus one oh five. Your draw a plus two ninety. PSG a plus two seventy one. Okay, Nick. I'm going to take the machine of death uh, known as Bayern Munich to walk out the winner. Okay. I'm next, and I will also go Bayern. Jarrett? I will take PSG in leg one, but Bayern won the whole thing. Wow. John? I'll go draw. (laughs) No surprise. All right. I'm trying to counter-program you guys. I think that's Mm -hmm. a good pick, John. It's a good Mm -hmm. pick. Mm -hmm. Thursday. Real Esteli, Columbus Crew, <laughs> Atletico Pantoja, and Monterrey. Uh, we've got Ecuador, Cuenca hosting Barcelona. We've got Europa League, Ajax hosting Roma. Arsenal, Slavia Prague, Dinamo Zagreb, Villarreal. I don't think we've had any arrests in, in Croatia lately. Granada hosting Manchester United. Hmm. Hmm. Nick can't pick. Jared's mm-hmm. got two in his back pocket. Mm-hmm. Um. Jared, are you being strategic? Are you waiting for the weekend? You know, I was just thinking, let's just who wants to pile on Slavia Prague? Because I feel like piling on Slavia Prague. You want to do Arsenal hosting Slavia Prague? Uh, I'm just going to pick against Slavia Prague. <laughs> okay. Okay. John, what are the numbers? All right. Hang on just a second. Arsenal and Slavia Prague. Arsenal a minus 175. Your draw a plus 326. Slavia Prague a plus 490. Ooh. Um, I guess I go first this time around as we go keep going in order in a snake. Uh, I kind of have to go Arsenal here. Yeah. I'm, I. I go that way? Um, I'll go draw. I'm going to go draw. Okay. I think it's ugly. Draw. Okay. So, Jarrett? Uh, Arsenal. Okay. Uh, John? Arsenal. Nick? Slavia Prague. Oh. All right. I got to pick. John's got to pick. Jarrett's got to pick. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday. Uh, we got Nacoxa and Pumas. We got Platense and San Lorenzo. We got Fulham and Wolves. We got I'll a take West... that one. Whoa. Okay. Uh, Jarrett, you good with that? Yeah, go for it. Fulham and Wolves. Okay. Fulham and Wolves. What you got, John? Fulham is a plus 146. Your draw is a plus 212. And Wolves are a plus 219. Hmm. And it would be Jarrett picking first this time around. Can you give me the numbers again, John? Fulham plus 146. Your draw a plus 212. Wolves a plus 219. Fulham is hosting. They've lost three in a row. Wolves haven't won in their last five. Well, somebody's got to disappoint themselves one way or another, right? Pretty yep. much. In theory. Um, let's disappoint everybody and take the ball. Nobody's happy. <laughs> All right, John. Fulham. Fulham to win. Mm-hmm. Nick? Uh, I don't think that either team has the ability to really – Hold a lead for any period of time. I'm going to take the draw. I'm also going to take the draw. I think it's Fulham's way. All right. Saturday and Sunday. Saturday. We've got, and Jarrett's got his blocks so he can veto me. That's not cool. Uh, Cruz Azul hosting Chivas. Tigres hosting Club America. 
Uh, we've got Deportivo Cali hosting Atletico Nacional in Colombia. We've got Independiente del Valle hosting Universidad Católica. We've got Manchester City hosting Leeds. We've got Liverpool hosting Villa. We've got Real Madrid hosting Barcelona. <laughs> Just that little game. Uh, Parma hosting Milan. Uh, what do we have in Scotland, Jared? Anything on Saturday or is it Sunday? Well, you've got both to choose from. And the question is here, Uh-oh. do you want to do Oh, God, he's classical. got the voice like he's been planning on. Yeah, yeah. crap. What do you got? You have a Celtic and Livingston game where Celtic has drawn two straight against Livingston. And do you really trust them to win a game? Do you want that game? I don't want to take away El Clasico for people. So, Jason, is that is that the one you were going to pick? I, I feel like I have to for the people. I, I feel like we have to as well, so I will... I will I will, I will take I will make, it as my I will pick. El- it will be I my will pick. I'll make it mine, honestly. How about that? I'll okay. make it mine. You'll make it yours. Wow, that's neighborly. So I'll have Sunday. Okay. So you can have Sunday. And unless it's something just so far out of left field, I won't block it. Mm, I can go pretty far in left field. But anyway, Real Madrid and Barcelona. What we have right now, John, what are the numbers? Real Madrid a plus two hundred four. Your draw a plus two eighty. Barcelona plus one twenty five. It is in Madrid. Uh, Barcelona is like a machine at this point. Madrid is a machine with flat tire. Um, Jerry, you went first last time, so this is John going first. Uh, Barca. Okay, Nick. draw okay i am going with barcelona jared i'm taking barcelona and just please just finish off real yeah i think it's time i think it's time all right sunday let's see what direction am i gonna go um we could go to Argentina with River hosting Pulga Colón. That's a, that's a maybe. Um, we could go to the Derby of all Derbies, Racing and Independiente. They hate each other. So Gustavo would have could probably like put out a hit on me if I blocked this. Yeah, we could go Tottenham and Manchester United. We could go Betis and Atletico Madrid. We could go Fiorentina and Atlanta. Eh. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, I kind of have to go Independiente and Racing, correct? I am the Argentine guy I believe guy you here. do. I believe we have to continue this derby of ours. Yeah. Uh, this day. This I feel week, like whatever. I feel Time like it's matter. a must. It's a scam. I, I know we don't have the numbers on this one. We'll get them when they become available. Uh, this is actually a really good game. Racing is in sixth place in zone one, three, three, two, and three on the season on twelve points. Independiente is on thirteen points, four, three, and one on the season. Uh, Alan Franco coming to Atlanta hasn't been good for Independiente. Sorry, Gustavo. Racing hasn't won in their last two either. Last time these teams played, there were people in the stands. Sebastian Beccasese had left Independiente, went across the street to Rossing. Yeah, There was bloodshed, I think, multiple <laughs> times in the game. There were players who looked like mummies by the end of it. Beccasese was uh, thrusting his pelvis in the general direction of Independiente <laughs> people. It was out of control. It was With one of the wildest games hair. I have ever seen. Gustavo is already threatening people. You can <laughs> say what you want about Independiente Rossing, but if you don't put Independiente, there will be consequences. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm kind of afraid of taking this game now, but I guess we're already there. Rossing and Independiente. Rossing hosts, I mean, it's across the street, I, and there's no people in the building, so I don't know if it really matters. Um, 
it is Nick's turn to go first. Uh, unlike the United States government, I do negotiate with terrorists. I'm going to pick Independiente. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gustavo, I love you. Huh, Gustavo, y- y- your side hasn't been so good since Alan Franco <laughs> well, got on the plane. Go. I mean, they have it. They lost to Velez. They drew with Boca. That was a good result. They lost to Tacheres. 3-1. 3-1. Tacheres. That's what they're going to win now. Tacheres had a red card in the 70th minute. Still, 3-1. Man. Um, hmm. Who wins it for me? If I want to go Independiente, who is going to do the business? To win this game, um, it would probably be in all day, like breaking somebody's leg. That would be about it. Yeah, uh, Horace Patanas with in all day. Uh, yeah, and, and I think I might know something about this game as well because I pay attention to these things. And no, I will not share it uh-huh. until after everybody's made their picks. I want to double. They put Martha Stewart in for jail for something like this. I just want you to. That's uh, fine. That's fine. Um, hmm, is it accurate? Uh, <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, I don't want you stop. See, the thing me. is, is that when you make your selection, you're get your that's the tell for the information well, that you. You have. don't know what the information is. I might just think Independiente's been crap since Alan Franco left. Um, which they have been. <sighs> I don't want Gustavo to kill me. Um, <laughs> Gustavo. Do you care more about lording your picks over us or Gustavo possibly shuffling your mortal coil off this planet? I do want to live. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I feel bad, but I'm going to go with Rossing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going with Rossing. Gustavo, remember RIP in peace. Yeah. Jarrett, your pick. Um, I'm going to take Independiente. Uh, <laughs> despite the fact that I'm pretty like vocal about the fact that I don't harbor necessarily any ill will against Rossing for the game in 67, <laughs> I'm still like emotionally obligated to problems. pick against them. You got problems mm. with it, yes. Okay. Uh, John? I don't want to die, Independiente. That's fine. Your goalkeeper's got the coronavirus. Ha! Which means that to me, it's like bringing in the 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 rookie pitcher from the minors for that one right. start, and he handcuffs you for six and only gives up the one run. Right, John, you're intoxicated. I didn't know Rossing was the Braves. You're you're absolutely intoxicated. Uh, there could be a COVID outbreak in the Independiente side. They they might be playing all kids from the U17 team. Alan and Franco's not ballers. there. Rossing wins, and that will win the week for me. There Ooh. you go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Sorry, Gustavo. I'm just I, waiting I, for I Jason to take care of it. Rossing wins, wins and week. Jason still doesn't win the week. <laughs> that, that would suck. That would absolutely suck. Um, sorry, Gustavo. I got to. I got to win this thing. Okay. It's it's nothing personal. I got to win this thing. Business is business. And and you, I, I don't think you guys understand the. It's gonna be like an Arn Anderson NWA promo. If when Jason wins again, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be something magnificent. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gustavo <laughs> says, uh, first it was Sampaoli, then Becca Sese, and now this. John is not a traitor like Jason. <laughs> wow. Hey, I, I, if, if, it, and that's why I double checked it. If Sosa it did not come down with the COVID, I'm going to have a hard time picking against somebody with, uh, very detailed tattoos on his bald head. Uh huh. Um, I would have went draw. But find a way to find you. But he's not there. Rossin gets it done because there might be a bunch of kids playing in Independiente shirts. And not the one who replaced Alan Franco. Mm, it's okay. Just saying. We all make choices in life, Jason. It's okay. No, no, I feel fine about it. I'm going to win the That's week with choice. that. With yeah. that one, I'm yeah. going to win the week. Becca Sese might come running out and, and just pump his pelvis in the general direction of where the Independiente <laughs> fans would have been. Pump his pelvis in the general direction sure. of each and every camera position. Sure, he might do that. He, he might roll around on the ground again. I mean, he, he might do that oh, just to laugh. Awesome. 
I don't know. My I think he, God, he's he's angry God. with crossing too these days, so he might. I just keep that. thinking about the scene from Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, Son? And for that, you sold your everlasting soul. No, no, I'm just gonna <laughs> win. One That's week's all. worth of wins. I'm just gonna win. That's all. If 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 the goalkeeper was there, I would have picked a draw. I think they would cancel each other out, but I think all the absences are gonna hurt Independiente, and they lose to Rossing. Sorry. Okay. So wow. later in the week when the numbers pop up, I will make the numbers public. Yeah, I wonder what they will be, actually. That's a good question, because I, I don't know what they will end up being. Um, it's kind of hard to call. It's pretty even, actually. So, I mean, it might not be, like, a big swing either way. Rossing's the home team, so I don't know if it's going to be, like, big money on it. Yes, Gustavo will uh, talk all sorts of trash if Independiente wins. I know, Burned. I know. I'm already prepared for it. But I got to pick what I think is right. And when they lose, the, hey, you know, when they lose Sosa, we all make choices. Against it. Yeah, we all make choices. I'm, I'm happy with okay. my choices. I'm very, yeah. very good with my choices. It's okay. Yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. I don't feel bad. Yeah, I don't feel of bad. Of course. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't make picks to try to curry favor. I just make the picks. I give the because he the wants to win the week. I want to give people the information. If they if if they followed Jarrett last week, they would have been really, really good. If they followed me, they would have been really good. They followed Nick. Yeah, they would have made money. Following Jason hasn't really let anyone wrong. Yeah, like I haven't had like a, I think I've had one really bad week. Yeah, like in gen. I think I don't even know if I finished last in that. I don't. I don't remember if I did or not. I had one bad week, but I think it yeah. was a week that we all sucked. If I remember yeah. right. That, yeah. I think it was one of those like but somebody so won with a, a negative number. That's going to like redefine reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably it'll happen at some point. The gravitational pull of a neutron star. Yeah, gonna... I'll com- get completely yeah, jinxed. This is what happens when like something is in really aggressive orbit around a black hole and it whips past it at at like the velocity enough to shear a planet in half. Yeah, that's what's about to happen with my picks. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We will see how this goes down. Um, okay, uh, you've got more problems with your I- Italian group, Nick. Um, oh, God, yeah. Let's see what Football Italia is saying. Uh, The FIGC announced that four Italy staff members tested positive for COVID last week, but the cases have now more than doubled with growing concerns among Serie A clubs. Uh, Five or maybe six Italy internationals caught the virus. Uh, The uncertainty is due to a case at Torino. Uh, They never reveal which one of their players test positive. Uh, According to uh, one media outlet, it is Salvatore Sirigu who contracted the virus this time, um, was part of the national team. Uh, Donnarumma tested negative. Uh, the other goal, oh, no, uh, Kragno did test positive on April 4th. Uh, Donnarumma already had the COVID back in September, so I mm-hmm. guess he's, he's okay. Uh, Benucci, yeah, we know. Uh, Marco Verratti at PSG, yep. Uh, Florenzi, yep. Um Cragno and Sirigu played on Saturday, so there's concern because they played. Um, Sassuolo decided to leave their Italy internationals out of their match against Roma, which finished 2-2. Uh, they Brilliant. Want, yeah, they didn't want any problems. So, yeah, uh, good times, Italy. Nick? It, it's, it's a major problem still over there. Their, their vaccine rollout has been incredibly slow. Um they the when the AstraZeneca went sideways, I think it really it really hampered efforts to put shots in arms. And as a result, the it, the pandemic is not going away, and they can't open the borders, and they can't you know they can't allow the tourists back in, and much less that they can't even keep the numbers down it, it, to you know let businesses reopen and, and get some back, get back to some sense of normalcy. Italy, if any country, if, if, if anyone ever says, well, the U S has got it backwards, the U S has, has it backwards. Fair enough. But if any country should be like, we will do whatever it takes on God's green earth to eradicate this thing, it should be Italy. And yet they're still having problems uh, getting it under control. And that's, it's very sad. Um, you know, I, when I talk to my family, they say they're, they're doing the best they can. They're wearing masks. They're, they're still treating it very seriously. Unfortunately, uh, you have a large 
portion of the youth population that is going out and, you know, hanging out at speakeasies and they're hanging out and they're partying with each other and people sneaking in each other's windows and whatnot. And it's spreading. And Them Dawson's River kids. <clears throat> yes. And you have morons, uh, you know, or people who make like Benucci or uh, people who make dumb decisions like McKinney and uh, Dybala who throw parties. And, you know, what, what did you think was going to happen? You know, for anybody out there who's throwing parties and all that, what did you think was going to happen? But, oh, anybody but us. Right. So, yeah. Well, there's also, what, what kind of consequences are there for it, really? I mean, what kind of consequences are they facing for their stupidity? Right. Ask Weston and, McKinney. And, and here's the thing that happened in Italy that did not happen in the U.S., right? Yeah. So my cousin lives in Bergamo, which was, I mean— it was an absolute disaster there uh, when COVID was running rampant. They had military vehicles with coffins because they had so many dead that the morgue couldn't handle it. And they had a military convoy come in, load up caskets, and drive through the town. It was almost like bring out your dead, bring out your dead, and except in real life. And so – that's what's so shocking about this is these guys had this. It wasn't like, you know, here in the U.S. where you watch news and you get little bits and pieces and, oh, it's it's fine. And and then you get an outbreak here or there and you it's easily, you know, you can assign whatever blame you want. Over there, it was like a sci-fi movie, you know. They're not worrying about blame this, blame that. You know, is it serious, is it not? They're watching – military caravans of corpses on the way out of town. Uh, it, it's shocking to me that Italy has bungled this in the way that they have, because they were so close. They were so close. And, uh, and it, you know, they, they seem to be stuck in the mud at the moment. And, and it's going to cause major issues for the government as well. Don't be shocked if there's yet another vote of no confidence, and yet no, more elections to try to get something else going. Uh, Rich Ransom is in on Twitter. Mm -hmm. A couple, things, couple things from Rich. He says, how crazy would it be if Barca wins La Liga after all the drama that's engulfed them? They are in the driver's seat, I think. With the home game right. against Atleti later in the season, it depends on what happens with them this weekend. Right. Uh, if they win this weekend, they are 100% in the driver's seat. 100% because they get Atleti coming into their house in May. They'll be in control. It's going to be one of the best sports stories in big time soccer you know, in the past what five ten years if, to go and from that a level choke of job by Atleti. Mm -hmm. oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Look, last year in February, the the conversation was Atleti needed to move on from Simeone. Early this season, it looked like Simeone had opened up a little bit more. It looked like they were playing a little bit more. He was getting away from being so defensive and gets later in the year he gets more defensive it's it's just who he is it's it's just who he is and they probably do need to make a change because you know they're they're wasting jaw felix yep you know they, they've got attacking talent in this team but they have a manager who won't let it go they they just right. won't so i I think you're back to where you were late last season in that you might need to make a change at the manager spot. Even with everything Simeone's done for them, it might be time to shake it up because I don't think it's going to get done with the way it's currently going. Yeah. I just don't. And no. Rich's second point, he says, you will put respect on West Brom and give them their flowers because Big Sam used the gravy press trademark on Chelsea. <laughs> that ain't true! There was no pressing. They, they were still scared of town. <laughs> the gravy press. They were the still gravy. scared. The, the great <laughs> gravy press just sounds so messy and unnecessary. That was Much about like how West that game Brom played out. Yes. Yeah, that, that exactly. game was was ugh. Um, oh, it was a dog. They, they uh, it just cracked me up how everybody wanted to bow down at the feet oh, of Big great. Sam. Let's drop the he scored five goals. It's great. Oh yeah. Let's talk for ten minutes about how great Big Sam is. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Oh, we uh, must say that they played with. Uh, they played against ten. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, yeah, by, they, by the way, we we do have to point out 
that Chelsea had a first half red card. We have to point that out. Oh, Big Sam! Oh, he's so dreamy! Ah, we love his gravy. Sixty minutes. Down a man. Like I'm seeing teams lock it down with a first half red card and not give up goals like that. It. What What's funny about it to me beyond that is the fact that Chelsea just. And some of it is from the Lampard days. I get it. It's just that they just could not. Like, something about West Brom this year in Chelsea mm-hmm. is just so damn funny to me that it's like, oh, man, Chelsea might play in Champions League next year. Uh, what might have hampered their year? Uh, West Brom West and Big Brom. Sam. There's that. I want to see how they bounce back That's against hilarious. Porto. Yeah. I, I want to see what they look like against Porto. I, I won't put respect on them. I'll put respect on them. Mondays with Reddit. Nick, what you think about uh, your boy Jim Pilata expressing an interest in buying a Premier League club and name-checking Newcastle United? Good. He, he wasn't – look, Jim Pilata is, is a loud mouth. I love the guy. He's But the problems that surrounded Roma were not all on him. Some of it was. Like, he allowed – Monkey to stay for way too long. He had the problems with revenue generation from the the stadium issues. The fact that the city of Rome never got their act together, just like they're not getting their act together now on the creation of a new stadium. And he finally decided I've thrown enough money at this thing. And if he wants to take his money and go to the prem and get a hold of Newcastle you guys could do a hell of a lot worse. So I have no problems with it. The guy's a character. The guy's an absolute character. Remember when uh, Roma upset Barcelona, he jumped into a fountain surrounded by Roma supporters. <laughs> like completely, like, didn't just jump in, like planed out into the, into the fountain, got a major fine. Uh, he paid it off like the crowd went nuts. They thought it was great. But you could do a heck of a lot worse than, than Jim Pilata. I mean, I'm on board for this. He'd be a little bit different than uh, Mike Ashley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, Roma has been competent. That's the that's what people forget. Roma's been more than competent. They've they've had systemic issues with with how they they had issues with how they handled Francesco Totti and his and his willingness to be around the club. And then they, you know, but the storyline on that was that. Jim wasn't really involved in that, and it was Monkey and everybody else surrounding it. That uh, and Eusebio De Francesco, who really pushed to get him as far away from the club as humanly possible. But at the same time, they were constantly sniffing around Champions League. They were constantly uh, in, in good positions. Uh, you know, when it came to player transfers and whatnot, they. You know, I I really see good things for Newcastle if he takes over. But, I mean, again, it all comes down to Mike Ashley and if he's going to start playing games again with the final bill of sale. So There's always that. Oh. What else we got for... John, you've got like 27 notes from England. I do. You you well, talked about every game up, that, so that England select. had last uh, over the weekend. You had things on, um, let's see, you, you didn't even talk about it this morning, the, the great, biggest thing in the tabloid media in England. What? Antonio Rudiger and Keppa got into a fight. Yeah, they did. Yeah, whatever. People have dust ups it all the time. It just so happened that somebody saw this one at Chelsea. So Rudiger and Keppa got into a had a dust up. More power to you. Whatever. Enjoy. They had a dust up. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see how you respond to. Oish. I just I want to see how you respond when you get back into Champions League today. You had. Uh, Everton, Crystal Palace, uh, Crystal Palace equalized late. Mishi Batshuayi, Everton looked like uh, Ancelotti said they needed to win six of their last ten to get into Champions League. Now they're going to have to win six of their last nine. 
uh, because they drew Crystal Palace and West Ham beat Wolves 3-2. And so that keeps, uh, I think it puts West Ham in fourth as a matter of fact right now. And so they're done for the next couple of days. Uh, Over the weekend, you had uh, Manchester United scoring two late to beat Brighton. Villa was down 1-0 to Fulham. They come back and score three. Uh, There was uh, two from Trezeguet within about three minutes, and then they scored another one late. Uh, Newcastle and Tottenham. Hold hold on, hold on. we got to talk about Scott Parker. Okay. Nick's favorite. Scotty Scotty Tuhati. Tuhati. He he accuses players of not being streetwise enough. They had the 1-0 lead. They were going to jump out of a relegation spot into safety. Mm-hmm. and then they gave up uh, three goals in the final 12 minutes. He said, at certain moments in the game, you have to understand where you are and what you need, and we didn't manage that. Sometimes you need to be horrible. Play the game in the right territory. We were walking away with one point, and then we were sloppy. It's a young team, but we were naive and made silly mistakes. After the first goal, we dropped our intensity, and it affected us too much, and we weren't street-wise enough. They got pickpocketed. That's you, my man. They got That's you, my man. If you don't, if you don't prep your team, he's not on how to be dirty and when to be dirty. That's on you. Scott's not not dirty. Look at him. He's a clean I, I, man. I know plenty of pretty people who are some of the dirtiest fighters. Some of the that so, so you're saying mm-hmm. that Scott Parker needs to be a baby faced assassin, Nick? That's I don't think he's got that in him. I, I, if he, if you are telling your players and post game presser, you need to be streetwise. What he means, that's, that's gentlemanly, for you need to be <laughs> dirty, uh, dirty a blank for the final, what, 20 or 30 minutes. And if you have to stick a foot in, you stick a foot in. You get a card, you get a card, but you get out with the points. And if you have, that's, uh, you let in three goals? Is that mm-hmm. what happened? Three, three goals? goals? No, 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 no. That's, that's before foonishness sir that is on you that's not on players are getting a little lackadaisical no that is on you you have to educate your players here's how you dive here's how you you do some tackling when it needs to be done and here's where you do it and if you get cards you get cards and if you get something that's a little more uh, as dusty Rhodes say a little bit of color a little bit of red if you will. Then you know where you're gonna you know where you're gonna do it. It's outside the AT. You don't do it in a position where you get the penalty. But if it's the last five or six minutes and they are moving with the ball, it, we may have to do a, a, a few 50-50 challenges that are a bit questionable to get out of there with the result. Yeah, Fulham's got to get a little nasty. Uh, tell us yeah. about who the Daily Mail thinks will be in charge at Sheffield United going forward. Is that uh, is that the dude from the fourth place team in Belgium? Yes, uh, Alexander Blessin from Ustende. Uh, strong contender for the vacancy at Sheffield United. 47-year-old German made his name as a youth team coach at RB Leipzig before, before joining Ustende last summer. They're fourth in the Belgian League. Um, the owner of Sheffield United is believed to be looking for a young coach, fresh ideas, and has been attracted by Blesson's work with young players and his ability to operate on a budget. Paul Heckingbottom is the guy in charge right now. They face Leeds yes. in a derby on Saturday. Yeah, and uh, since we talked about Fulham, the team that they had the chance to catch up with, with a win that they didn't win at uh, so Newcastle. Yes. Newcastle got a point. Their match against Spurs and Jose Mourinho had fun with the press conference. Well, yeah, because his team threw away points again. Uh, Mm -hmm. This is the the stat of the day. If Premier League matches ended at halftime this season, Tottenham would be second in the table. They've thrown away halftime leads in six matches. Mm. Um, And that's, again, on who? That's on the manager. It's absolutely on the manager. Um, He seems to think it's on the players. Uh huh. Which, I mean, to a degree, yeah, the players got to execute that. That part's accurate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh huh. No. If if you play five games, right, and the players bottle it in one or two, right, right, right. That's right. That's on the players. 
if it's ha- if the same thing is happening with regularity, that's on you. Because if your players aren't approaching the game in the right way, you dial up the intensity in training, or you make a statement move by benching some of the people who normally start to send a signal that no more games are being played. And you adjust your tactics accordingly. So if they are having a bit of trouble in possession of the ball because they're not exactly focused that much, either we are going to do something like maybe press a bit higher so that way they're more athletically engaged early on, or we're going to play crash the Marta bus <laughs> and, <laughs> and we're just going to bunker out of control. But that's on the manager. And I'm tired of, of Jose Mourinho with I used to win the Premier League this week. Time. And no, I, I, this, the stick is old, man. It's washed up. It's old. You are washed up. Go away for a couple of years, get your mind right, and come back and, and rediscover what made you you. But th- the problem is, is that he's been around for so long that, that, that in his mind, this is him. This ridiculous crap, you know, the showman. The showmanship yeah. garbage that he comes out every week. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm really tired of the guy coming out and, and, and doing this mess. And no, it has nothing to do with the fact that he won a trouble at Inter. It has to do with the <laughs> fact that everywhere he goes now, after one man's tactics and brilliance proved superior to his own, he became a caricature of himself. And I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm, I, it's buffoonishness. He, he got it exposed at Manchester United and now he's scraping by with Spurs and now it's it's, it's a player it's a player player. shut up man take some time off and walk away tired of it wait wait for the Portugal job to open up and then take that and run a national team that's where you need to be at this point I think the club game has kind of passed him by Yes. Okay. Final questions. Uh, if you have them, tweet at us at soccer down here. We got a couple minutes before we shut up shop. We have a set change, and then Kelly Francis comes in, and Kelly and I will talk Atlanta and Alawalense and Concacaf Champions League tomorrow. Coco says if Jim Pilata's first order of business is to fire Steve Bruce, he can have Newcastle. <laughs> yeah, he will. He he's yeah. not gonna. He's not gonna put up with that nonsense. No, he, he's going to – he wants to play an express – he wants his teams to play in, in an expressive and fun way. He is aware of the showmanship factor of, of – the, the entertainment factor, rather, of a side. He knows it's important. He knows that he's – I mean, he under his stewardship, AS Roma uh, English became one of the greatest Twitter accounts in sports history. He is aware, painfully aware, of how social media – and public perception will govern the popularity of your club. And you guys will be a okay. He will get rid of Steve Bruce. He will find a manager who wants to play a bit more open and expressive uh, soccer. And he will certainly up a lot of the surrounding, uh, uh, surrounding businesses of your team. So I, I would be a okay with that hire. Well, here's what here's what uh, Joe Willock, who scored the game tying goal in the two two draw with Spurs. Joe Willock was asked what Steve Bruce told him, gave him you know instructions as he goes out to be the late sub and he scores the goal of the equalizer to make it two two. Here's what Joe Willock said. He, meaning Steve Bruce, told me to come on, run around, and try and score. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Welcome to Steve Bruce this week. Hmm. How long are people going to be accepting of this? No, I, they're I see, not. I, I they're not. Said, That's the uh, thing. They're not. It, it's, it's the owner who is. Mm. Because he yep. thinks they're going to keep him up. Like, nobody's accepting of it except for that guy. Uh, right. Perfect Tommy wants to know if Jim Pilata sponsored today's show. I wish he can if he wants. We'll say yeah. more nice things about him if he wants to. Um, uh, look, we we can join the Jim Pilata Empire. That's cool. When I when I talk about Jim Pilata, he seems like a fun guy. Look, he there were areas with Roma where he went wrong. I mean, he kept Monkey around for way too long as a as sporting director. He kept uh, Eusebio De Francesco in way too long. He 
had opportunities to make wholesale changes at the club to make them more competitive, and he failed to do so. It's not all Jim Pilata love fest over here. Man, we're not going to get that sponsorship, he, Nick. Hey, you know, <laughs> keep it 100. All right. But comparatively speaking, if I have to have someone be in charge of my club, you could do a hell of a lot worse than Jim Pilata. He's not problematic. He doesn't have a ton of baggage like some other people do. Uh, he does not have uh, the the buffoonishness or the like that stubborn pride crap that uh, Mike Ashley trots around with. He doesn't do power flexes for the sake of power flexes. He is a businessman. He will make that club profitable. He will make that club competitive because he knows that is the making the club competitive is the fastest way to make it profitable. So uh, that's why I, I talk about Jim Pilata the way I do. It's not necessarily having to do with any sort of major fandom outside of that. He can be a bit prickly though, because uh, Roma ultras got mad at some of the, the results in the, on the domestic side and they started spamming his sister's restaurants with negative reviews and he went off. Off. I mean, like, come after me. I'm a man. I'm there 40. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, and plus, the question gets asked. If the question gets asked about Jim Pilata, mm-hmm. I'm going to answer in full depth as far as I can go. Last question from Burned. Very quick answer. Daryl DK, does he have success if he gets his move to the Premier League next season? John. Uh, not as much as in the championship. I think he'll have how many uh, goals if in a full season in the prem? Four. Wow, I think that's low. Nick, uh, I say, I say yes, he will. He can. He's a. He, he can create his own shot. A little bit. I, I just say. don't think. I just don't think he's going to start. That's my biggest thing. If you're going to pay twenty million, he's going to start. If if I think if you pay if you pay twenty if you pay twenty to twenty five million for him. I say he's going to score at what, 15. Hmm, I'll go more like 10. I, I think he'll go to like a uh, mid-table, somewhere between 10 and 13. It feels like Crystal Palace would come calling. And, I hope uh, so. He'd go to Palace, and they'd be kind of direct. He'd get about 10 goals. They'd have to invest in players first. Yeah, that's true. And not have Roy Hodgson as their manager. Uh, right, here's the thing. Unlike Timo Werner, he can create his own shot. He can receive the ball yeah. farther back from the pitch and create his own shot. He can be a bruiser, too. Okay, the run-up is next. Jillian Gaffigan, you're going to have to hang out and come back for the run-up, which is going to come back after we have a set What's change. Up, Joe? What's up, Joe? Kelly Francis is on deck waiting for this show to end. We are going to stop streaming for just a little bit. We're mm-hmm. going to stop on the app. Uh, yep. John and Nick are going to run out stage left. Kelly's going to get ready. And then we're going to be ready to go in about two, three minutes. Uh, Send us uh, home, Nick. I'm not going to hold it up anymore. I'm out. Moochie, moochie, euro, y'all. We're gone. All the lyrics.